it's Jennifer from the blog The Everyday Farmhouse and today we're going to be making soap. We're going to try another uh, Squatch copycat soap and this one uh, is called Wood Barrel Bourbon. And so this is a medium grit soap and it is beautiful and I love it. <laughs> it. It turned out so well. Now the one disclaimer I have is the fragrance. I don't I don't know that I got the fragrance exactly right and that's probably something you're going to have to play around with to get it to smell just like theirs. Um, the fragrances that they have listed in their ingredients um, are patchouli and cloves and something called guayac wood, um, which was an oil that I had a little bit of difficulty finding. Uh, it was expensive and it took a long time to get here. It came from India. So I, on another batch that I made, I substituted sandalwood. I think that they smell very similar, but maybe that's why mine didn't come out. I'm almost wondering if you need a fragrance oil to get it to smell exactly like the Squatch soap. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, the fragrance is lovely. I do think the clove comes through stronger than the patchouli or anything else, but it's a wonderful smell. It's a perfect manly soap, but I use it as well. Um, I think it's just a really great soap. Now, if you don't like grit, <laughs> that's this probably isn't the soap for you or you can leave that out. I wanna touch on additives before we get started. A lot of people, when I post recipes um, that have a lot of additives and they'll ask, can I leave this out or can I add something out else? And the answer is yes. When it comes to additives, you're not changing um, the recipe of the soap per se. When you're calculating how much lye you need for a recipe, it's based on the amount of oils that you're putting in. Now, the lye needs to eat up those oils. So if you were to change an oil, which I get a lot of people asking about changing out oils, and that's not something you can typically do. You can't just take one oil and switch it out for another oil without recalculating the recipe. But with additives, you can take away or add them because they're not changing how the soap is actually going to saponify it. They're just an extra thing that's in the soap. Um, so as far as fragrance goes, I wanted to talk about kale and clay. That's something that I started adding to my soaps about a year ago. And I just want to show you when you add the kale and clay and I give you all the ingredients for the recipe as we go through and make it, um, you want to mi mix it with some water first, and then you can even add your oils into this. But this is, um, the recipe calls for two teaspoons of kale and clay, and then I mix that with about a tablespoon of water and you make what's called a slurry. So that it's, you don't just have clumps of the white powder in your soap. I've done that, <laughs> or I've not added enough water and you know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't anchor the fragrance as well, but that's what the kale and clay does is it anchors your fragrance and just makes it last so much longer in the bar of soap. Um, I, I don't think I would go back to not using this. Just be sure to do it this way so that it mixes well. Now, this recipe also calls for some different things um, that maybe you're not used to using. What gives it its beautiful color are um, its red iron oxide and this annatto, ground annatto, it's, which is, uh, I believe, like a pepper. And um, I do wanna note that when you're using this soap in the shower, it does, uh, when, when you're rinsing off, the water is a little bit orange. Now I haven't noticed it staining our tub or anything like that, but as with other colored soaps, sometimes it makes the shower a little bit messy. So where it, you know, sits there on your soap holder or whatever, it'll be kind of orange around that as well. So just take note of that. Um, this also calls for brewer's yeast. So most of these things are easy to get a hold of. The kale and clay that I showed you, I mean, it comes in a huge <laughs> two pound bag. So I mean, this is gonna last for a really long time. Um, my lye, I just wanna let you know, I get the sodium hydroxide from Nurture Soap. I highly recommend them. It's always consistently good. I've never had any problems. It's easy to measure and um, they have really fast, good shipping. So all that to say, I'll show you everything that you need to make this soap. Uh, like I said, you might wanna play around with the fragrance. I think I ended up using about 30 drops of clove um, overall, the recipe calls for two ounces of fragrance, um, most of that being the patchouli and sandalwood. And then um, I did add a little frankincense just because I wanted a little bit more fragrance. I'm not sure that that added anything. I don't know that I pick up on that in the final fragrance. Really, the clove does overpower it. So you might want to um, reduce the cloves from even 30 drops to maybe down to 15. So if it, unless you like a really strong smelling clove soap, which I enjoy, 
and um, I've given this to my sons and my dad and they all enjoyed the fragrance of it. But if you're wanting it to smell just like the squatch, it does not. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into making this recipe and I'll take you step by step through it and uh, hopefully you'll just really love this bar of soap as well. Let's get started. Okay, so whenever I'm making soap, whether I'm recording a video or not, I measure out all my ingredients just like this. I do it in individual containers, you know, some of the additives I might put together, but this way everything is ready to go. I'm so much less likely to make mistakes if I have everything measured out. I know it's dirtying up a bunch of dishes, but it's fine. Um, it just saves so much trouble in the end if you, you know, you're at the point of trace and you're wanting to put in something that, oh no, I don't have it measured out or I can't find it. So just get it all ready to go ahead of time. And all of these um, ingredients are in the description along with a blog post that has detailed instructions on making this soap as well. Everything is listed there. So using a digital scale, that's one um, tool that you definitely need for making soap, a digital scale and an immersion blender are both very important. All of these weights are just that weights. Uh, the, nothing is measured by volume, um, even the liquid ingredients like the water, I don't measure it. Um, I may, in a measuring cup, I do it by weight with a digital scale. So here I'm measuring out the sodium hydroxide, which I will then mix with distilled water. You could use distilled water or filtered water. And again, I'm measuring this out by weight. And the thing to remember when working with lye is that the lye always is added to the water. Remember snow falling on a lake. And I always put cardboard underneath just to protect my counters because I've definitely burned those before. Um, with the lye solution, but you don't need to be fearful. It's just be cautious while you're using it and just know that splashing it around is, you know, a very possible thing when you're working with lye. So you just mix it in gently. I just use a plastic spoon to mix that in. Okay, now after this is mixed together, you're going to want to set this aside. So ideally your um, lye will cool to approximately 100 degrees and you're going to heat up and melt your oils to uh, about the same temperature. So it, if the oils are 110 degrees and the lye is 100 degrees or vice versa, it's fine just as long as they're about 10 degrees um, within each other within that range. Uh, that's how it saponifies the best. Okay, so I have melted down all my oils and we're going to check the temperature and make sure that it's within the same range as the lye and we're just going to add all of that together into a pretty good sized mixing bowl so I've got the coconut oil um, the palm oil and the olive oil and shea butter all mixed together here Okay, so I've checked the temperature and it's right about the 100 degree, 110 mark of the oils and the lye. And so now I'm gonna take that other tool that I said we would need. First, I'm gonna add my salt into the lye mixture. Now this is, you know, it's not something you have to do at this point if you forget and you can't add it until later with the other additives, that's fine. I add it to the lye water. The salt is just supposed to help the bar um, harden better. So um, I'm going to mix that in and then um, slowly pour the lye into your melted oils. Okay, so now we've started the process of um, mixing the oil and the lye together and we're using our immersion blender for this and I kind of switch between low and high on the setting and just give it a break every once in a while and just stir by hand just because they tend to overheat. Uh, you don't want to run it at high and just blow out your blender. So just kind of give it a break from time to time and switch between low and high 
uh, depending on how warm your oils are at this point, um, this process can take a little while, uh, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't take too awful long. So what you're waiting for is to see it come to a light trace before you put in all of your additives. Okay, about here I'm starting to get to a really light trace. The batter's becoming thicker. It's not leaving a very thick trace on the top, just a very fine trail. So I'm gonna start putting my additives in. I'm putting in the cornmeal and the pumice first, and it doesn't matter what order you put them in, just it's gonna take some work to get them thoroughly mixed in. And I was being a little bit cautious here just because I wasn't sure if any of the um, additives or if the fragrance oil would um, increase you know the uh, trace whether it would make it come to trace faster and and nothing did the the essential oils nothing accelerated trace so it all went fine um, I do switch to a whisk at one point just to make sure I'm getting everything and um, not splattering it around too much um, but I do switch to a whisk and I proceed to spill most of my kale and clay which it's fine when I make a mistake like that I just kind of go on with it and you know try to do better the next time just get as much of it in there as I possibly can so I'm putting that in and then I have my two ounces of uh, fragrance oils all measured out as well and I put those in at the same time if you wanted to mix those together with the kale and clay slurry that would be fine too I'm actually really glad I didn't because I would have dumped all my oils as well obviously so I'm just using a whisk at this point and then I'll switch back to using the immersion blender to get it to come to a thicker trace so that it's ready to be poured into the mold. Okay, at this point I'm pretty happy with where I am uh, with the soap. It looks like a pretty nice thick trace. It's still pourable. Um, I like to do it just a little bit thinner. I've had it seize up before where it's just too thick to pour in. This probably could have gone a little bit thicker, but the soap turned out just fine at this consistency. And so I just make sure to get every little bit and pour that into the mold. Okay, once I have it all poured into the mold, I kind of tap the mold down just to get any air bubbles to come to the top. And then I take a skewer and I just kind of do a really thin circular motion um, throughout the soap. And that just really helps it to kind of smooth down in the container or into the mold and just gives it kind of a pretty, you know, a pretty shape on top. It doesn't matter too much when you slice it, but I like to do that. And then I always just clean up the edges uh, from any smears uh, just to make it a little bit neater. Then I take a piece of cardboard that I've cut to size and I put that, I just reuse it over and over again and I put that on top of the mold just to keep the towel from getting in there. I wrap it in a light towel. I don't try to force mine to go through gel phase or anything like that. With some soaps, if they have milk or anything in them, I put them in the freezer. But for this, I just wrapped it up lightly in a towel and I set it on the counter uh, overnight. And then the next day, after the bars have sat for 24 hours in the mold, the next day I unmold it and cut it into bars. Now, I do not know why I cannot remember to record that step, but it seems like for every single soap making video I forget to do that, but it's really simple. You just use um, a, knife, a sharp knife or they make soap cutters that you can use and just slice it into bars. I think I got about 10 bars out of this loaf. Okay, so that is it. We have um, unmolded and cut our soap into these bars and it's such a nice gift and I just love knowing what's going into it what we're using on our bodies and um, you get to make it however you like and it just smells so good so thanks for joining me today I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please let me know in the comments if you made this soap and if it turned out well for you have a good day